Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, today is OGR Game 31 as your Edmonton Oilers walked away with a loss against the Buffalo Sabres in overtime as we lost 3-2. to two. And uh, I would have to say this was a game that we lost in the first period, I would have to say. Uh, we did not perform as great as we did in the first period as we did compared to the second period and the third period we played way better. And once again, EA... Guess the fucking score practically correctly as the Buffalo Sabres won 3-1. to one. It was 3-2 to two in the end of things, but I mean, what can you do about it? But uh, EA walks away with another victory as their record improves to 21-10 and 10, as uh, their record just keeps on improving. They were on a little bit of a losing streak, but they caught a big W uh, tonight as the B Buffalo Sabres walked away with victory. And they really did. The first period, they dominated. Uh, Kyle Pozo got a big one, which he just slotted himself back in line up not that long ago, I'm pretty sure. He's been he's been a kind of a so-so player over the past couple of years, but this year uh, he just got slotted back in the lineup. I'm pretty sure, yeah, 21 games, seven points. He's kind of the so-so player. I mean, he should not be being, getting paid six million dollars, but what can you do about it? But Okpozo got his third of the year, and then Ohan Larson got his third of the year with a nice pass from uh, Jimmy VC and Azplude. Uh, it was a really nice period to start off for the Buffalo Sabres. They really did uh, take the tempo. Mike Smith, I don't know, man. He he worries me sometimes because he could either be on his game or he could be off his game. And to start off the game, he was really not himself. Like the one that was Ohan Larson, it was a puck that was right in front of him. He bounced it out right to Johan Larson, which that's usually never a thing that we've seen from Mike Smith at the start of the season he would usually dive out grab that puck but he didn't he didn't go out and grab that puck he just sat there and watched the puck practically trickle to Johan Larson and let him snipe it past him which was not the nicest thing to see I wish we were actually able to capitalize and maybe get a goal or actually get a save so they didn't score but what can you do about it we really did not play to way that Buffalo did the second period, the Edmonton Oilers really brought that tempo, and we really brought them hard. Uh, Riley Sehan got his first with a nice little fucking forehand backhand right in the back of the net. It was a beautiful goal by Riley Sehan, and it was a definitely a depth scoring night. As then Joachim at night guard got his second in the year by a tip by Darnell Nurse. He had a two-point night, an assist, and a goal. He was just a fantastic player to see last night. His speed is just really nice to see. I'm pretty sure he's actually getting slotted up on the top line right now, if I'm pretty sure, alongside of McDavid and somebody else. But they're giving Yukim Nygaard a great chance to really perform because he had that chance on the kind of the first couple nights uh, for the Edmonton Oilers, and he just he kind of just never was able to figure himself out. But the way that the lineups are looking for the next game is Nygaard, McDavid, and Cassian. Which had speed, then you got McDavid, then you got Cassie, which looks like a really nice line. And in your second line, you got Jujar, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and Drysidle. And then third line, you got Neil Haas and Patrick Russell. And then fourth line, we got Granlin, Sehan, and Archibald. Uh, Defenseman, we also call up Caleb, Caleb, Caleb Jones, but we'll talk about that much later on. But Nygaard had a great game, and I'm really excited to see what he'll do against Connor, with Connor McDavid. He was bringing the speed and really, really need to see Connor McDavid produce. I mean, uh, this game, he didn't get any goals, no points from Leon Dreisaitl or uh, Connor McDavid, which is a, a rare night. And then over time, a minute 13 into overtime, Colin Miller. He scores his first of the season by a nice pass by Marcus Johansson. Nothing he could really do in overtime. We gain that point. We stay in first place in the division with a tie with the Arizona Coyotes. So we really need to get a victory right now. Um, we have a nice cushion from Vegas. We have a five-point cushion, but we really got to start carrying in the wins. But we're in a good cushion right now, but we really need to start carrying in more Ws. As to start off November, I'm pretty sure we're 1-1-1 one, one, and one, uh, to start off uh, 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 December, I mean. So it's not a bad start. Uh, defensively, I'd like to talk about UL Pearson, who just got sent down to the minors, uh, which I think is a great uh, great send down because UL Pearson, he's just... He's not the man to play alongside Oscar Kloppbaum. At the start of the year, I was really skeptical about him, and he just kind of keeps proving it that he's not the best player uh, on the Edmonton Oilers defense court. And they're actually going back to what actually worked a long time ago was Kloppbaum and Larson, which I'm really excited to see if that will work. Uh, they're doing Russell and Manning, which I fucking hate Brandon Manning, but uh, they're thinking of throwing Caleb Jones 
alongside of Russell as well, which there's been some rumors that they might be throwing him out there just because of the fact that he might be a tradable asset uh, in the later future as well, which I think would be a smart idea for sure to throw him in the lineup. I wouldn't recommend trading away Caleb Jones because he's my man. I absolutely love Caleb Jones. Same with Ethan Barham. Two big fans of those two players. As Caleb Jones really was playing better than UL Pearson when uh, Caleb Jones did get his chance. Caleb Jones played a simple hockey uh, nice crisp passes and when he was playing defense he played really well uh, Stats wise for the team wise we actually dominated in shots for the first time in a while uh, We outshot the Buffalo Sabres 28 to 22 So and we won most of the face offs by 63% our special teams are still dominant We killed off every single uh, penalty kill uh, we went over three on the or uh, three for three on the PK and then on power play, we got the one marker with Joachim and Nygaard with his one marker on the power play. So that was nice. And uh, we really dominated special team shots, face-offs. We dominated everything. Uh, the second and third period, we dominated. It's just we did not get the balances and we did not get off to the best start that we shouldn't have gone into. Mike Smith struggled. We really got to see Mike Smith kind of step things up in the next game. We really got to see him have a game like he did against Pittsburgh a couple weeks ago where he had like 50 saves and he was just robbing everyone. We really need to see uh, Mike Smith get back in that form uh, if he really wants to step up for the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, otherwise, Don Oilers had a great night. Ethan Bear, of course, always having a great night. I mean, those two guys. Uh, McDavid and Drysdale were held off the cap sheet. Riley Sehan, a great night. Joachim Nygaard, uh, my three stars. I would have to say Nygaard, Sehan, and Darnell Nurse are my three stars to go with tonight. They were just fantastic players. They played great. And simply enough, Joachim Nygaard, I'm really excited to see what he will do up on the first line with McDavid and Cassian. I'm hoping he gets a little bit more ice time because with eight minutes of play, he only played eight minutes and got two points. So that's pretty damn impressive. He was the lowest ice time alongside a Gatan has. So hopefully we can see Joachim Nygaard get some more minutes. But for right now, guys, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to send you guys right to the highlights as they're saying the Edmonton Oilers will win 5-4 to four in overtime against the Carolina Hurricanes, which I hope that is true because we need to start carrying some big victories if we want to stay first place in the Pacific Division. But for right now, guys, I'm going to sign off. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Adios, amigos. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Oil Country, Edmonton, Alberta. He's Ray Ferraro. I'm Shane Sabalski. Edmonton's closing out this homestand tonight. They could desperately use a win. Yeah, this can't close off quick enough for them, James. They've no. just not played very well here. You come home, you think that these are points in the bank for you that you can really put away. They just haven't played very well. Both teams lined up in the middle. We are ready to get things underway. Carolina's got the puck against the half wall. One timer, he scores! Sebastian Ajo! I don't think the goaltender gets a look at this at all, James. He just drops into the butterfly. He's hoping the thing hits him through that traffic. Get up by a great defensive play. One on one with the goaltender! Scores! Wow! Right, this is a great reaction. James, he doesn't have much time to finish it off. Makes a perfect shot. He must have seen a sliver of room there. He doesn't waste any time. He snaps that past the goalie and capitalizes on the breakaway. Petschnikov's got it in the offensive zone. Great defensive stick work on the play. Gets the puck back Out. onto his stick. He scores! They take the lead! Well, it looked like this game was going to be even for the longest time because nobody seemed to have the upper hand. When you get into this position, that puck's got to be off your stick in a hurry. You don't have much time to think about it. And he puts hits in the back of the net. He scores! They barely fished the puck out after the last one. Two goals in 70 seconds. You take a timeout here on the other side. I would have taken one then, and I'd take another one now. He makes a great play on the net. He's been doing it all season long. That's why he leads this team in goals. To a lot of offense thus far. That goes off the post and stays out. Wow. He scores! Ah, the power play comes through. They move the puck nicely, and they're able to capitalize on the extra man. Not 
Close up the wickets, Tendy. That thing's right through your legs. That's a pretty good shot. Goalies hate getting beat through the five hole. The Bear. Bear's got it along the wing. Right to the middle. Scores! He stayed with it and buries the rebound. That's how you score in tight. Take the rebound, take the gift, and put it away right in the top of the net. Big time stop there. Center down in front. Scores! And the deadlock is broken. Well, what a crushing goal to give up. But the other guys worked hard for it. They pressed the play, and now they've got the lead. Really good work here in the offensive zone. They don't score early, but they stay on it. They retrieve the puck again. They get a couple of chances. They wear them out, and eventually they score. Brings the puck into the offensive end now. Trailing in this one. They have pulled the goalie and the extra attackers out. And now it's grabbed. He scores! Could we get OT here? Well, we've got a better chance now, don't we? The game's tied up late here in the third period. The coach was pushing his players to stay aggressive, and they get the equalizer. Well, they were all over the place with the extra attacker on the ice. Finally, they cash through. Punch one in. McDavid's won the faceoff deep inside the offensive zone. Shot! Stopped by the goaltender. Scores! And that's the game! They take it in! needed overtime, but they come away with the victory here. Just your head down and keep working. Now you get into the extra frame, you get your chance. You better not miss, and they didn't. Ray Ferraro, my name is James Sabalski. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Have a great night.